Rising before dawn as usual, Jerry heads to work at the cornflakes factory, but today marks his last day. After 42 years, he's retiring. Finally he can enjoy his golden years. That evening, amidst family dinner, Jerry expresses uncertainty about his future. The family then surprises him with a retirement gift, a fishing boat. Later, Jerry shares his doubts about adjusting to retirement with his wife, Marge. A month later, Jerry finds himself idling, despite his knack for numbers. His accountant and friend, Steve, encourages him to use his new fishing boat. At the lake, a mishap with his car leads to his boat's destruction. Trying to unwind at his favorite convenience store afterwards, Jerry spots an advert for the windfall lottery. The numbers on the back intrigue him, and after some calculations on a napkin, he concludes that playing the lottery could be profitable. The math adds up. He explains to Steve that he's found a statistical loophole in the lottery. During roll-downs, purchasing tickets can nearly guarantee a win. Steve is doubtful, questioning how the lottery could ever yield a profit. Jerry, taken aback by Steve's skepticism, especially since he's an accountant, decides to act on his theory. He withdraws $2,000 from the bank, confident he'll return with a 20% increase in just a few days. Jerry then drives out of town to purchase 2,000 windfall lottery tickets. He waits for Marge to leave before tuning into the lottery draw, keeping his plan a secret until he can verify its success. However, after eagerly checking his tickets the following day, Jerry finds that, contrary to his calculations, he has actually made a loss. During a card game that evening, Jerry is preoccupied with thoughts of the lottery and his mistake. Marge, noticing his distraction and sensing something's up, waits until the neighbors leave before pressing him for the truth. Jerry opens up about feeling like he missed out on life and is unsure about his retirement. Through their heartfelt discussion, he has an epiphany. The next day, Jerry visits the bank, sharing his insight with the clerk about where he went wrong, the importance of sample size and probability, explaining that while flipping a coin 1000 times might result in 60% heads, increasing the number of flips brings the outcome closer to the expected 50-50 distribution, thereby minimizing the role of luck. Motivated by this realization, Jerry withdraws their entire savings of $8,000 and purchases 4,000 windfall tickets. Reviewing the tickets at the store, he finds he's nearly doubled his investment, validating his strategy. Jerry begins hiding his lottery winnings in a popcorn jar that no one touches. At a family and neighbor's barbecue, he panics when he sees his granddaughter with the popcorn jar and quickly relocates the money to a cereal box. Later, Marge confronts him, and he admits to playing the lottery, but she meant an empty bag of Oreos. This prompts Jerry to confess everything about his lottery scheme. Expecting disapproval, Jerry is surprised by Marge's reaction. She's actually excited and wants to join him in exploiting the lottery flaw. Jerry and Marge head to their local store to purchase more lottery tickets, only to discover that windfall tickets are no longer sold there. They're available exclusively in Massachusetts now. Steve, seeing the potential in their endeavor, decides to join in, contributing $1,000 to their collective investment. The next morning, Marge is energetic and prepares for their trip by packing supplies for three days, covering all necessities with excitement. The drive from Michigan to Massachusetts takes about 10 hours. At a small gas station, they plan to buy 8,000 windfall tickets. Since the ticket machine prints at a rate of 1,000 tickets per hour, the process will take a while. The cashier, Bill, invites them to make themselves comfortable at the machine. In their hotel room, they settle in to watch the lottery drawing and start sorting through all 8,000 tickets that same night. By sunrise, they finish tallying their results. From their initial $16,000 investment, they've earned $21,000. This success leads them to wonder if they're the only ones aware of this profitable loophole. At Harvard University, a student named Tyler is working on a research paper about lotteries. When he stumbles upon windfall, he senses something unusual about its structure. Driving back, just a mile from their home, Marge suggests to Jerry that they could use their lottery strategy to benefit their small town. She points out that investing more significantly improves their odds. Inspired, they approach Steve with a plan to form a company, offering shares to raise more funds for their lottery investments. They pitch their business to the local community, selling shares at $500 each, and even accept various forms of payment. Their daughter is intrigued and buys in, though their son shows little interest in the venture. Back at Bill's gas station, ready to purchase 41,000 tickets, Jerry and Marge introduce Bill to their new venture. Bill is immediately convinced of its potential and even convinces his friends to join, increasing the number of tickets for the group. Staying at the same hotel after the lottery numbers are drawn, the couple has to sort through the massive pile of tickets. Marge gives Jerry the look, suggesting they could postpone the task until the next day. The next morning, an excited Bill bursts in, revealing that the lottery commission sent a summary of all the winning tickets sold at his store, a total of $182,000 in winnings, effectively doubling their initial investment. Jerry and Marge turn their garage into a makeshift lottery ticket storage, cycling through their buying and sorting process repeatedly. 
they find themselves genuinely enjoying life, their strategy enabling them to double their money every three weeks, much to the delight of their investors. Back at Harvard, Tyler has conducted simulations on the windfall lottery, becoming convinced of the profitability of large-scale investment. He gathers his entire dorm to share the loophole he's discovered, a method to outsmart the lottery system. The next step is to pool their resources and begin filling out the mass of lottery slips required to test their plan. They keep the tickets in case they are audited by the IRS, they need to show all the losing tickets. Also the whole town wants to renew the amphitheater, and Jerry suggests his son to chip in, since he bought him a share since the very beginning. At the shareholder meeting, Jerry talks numbers and they move to a diner, where he tells Steve that their next investment will be around $600,000. The couple is expecting that soon their scheme will be discovered and want to make as much out of it as they can. Bill even got them a second ticket printing machine. A journalist catches wind of Jerry's consistent large winnings and finds it odd that someone would drive 10 hours to participate in a lottery in another state. At Harvard, Tyler and his dorm mates are relishing the profits from their own lottery venture. However, Eric points out that their payouts aren't as large as they should be, suggesting the presence of another group exploiting the same loophole. They hack into the lottery database and pinpoint the location where Jerry and Marge have been purchasing their tickets. While Jerry and Marge celebrate their anniversary at Bill's gas station, Tyler and his friend Eric are taken aback to discover that the rival group is an elderly couple. Tyler proposes joining forces, suggesting Jerry and Marge contribute their funds to his pool for a more efficient operation. However, Jerry declines, preferring the hands-on approach they've cultivated. Annoyed, Tyler advises Jerry to consider the binomial distribution, assuming he hadn't. To Tyler's surprise, Jerry is well ahead, revealing Tyler's extra profit of $32 for every $100,000 in winnings by manually filling them out by hand. Even Eric is taken aback by this information. Jerry and Marge just continue where they left off. Steve has done so well from their venture that he's bought himself a Corvette with his share of dividends. At Lottery Headquarters, journalist Maya confronts an executive, learning he knows about Jerry's monthly wins. At his favorite store, Jerry is taken aback by Tyler's appearance, who demands Jerry quit the lottery scheme. Tyler threatens to disrupt Jerry's life, boasting about hacking the state lottery as a warning of his capabilities. Faced with Tyler's threat, Jerry is left speechless. Jerry informs Marge that they have to stop their lottery activities. At the shareholder meeting, he shares the same disappointing news with everyone involved. However, as Jerry steps outside, his son offers him words of encouragement, telling him he's made their small town feel significant and that he should take pride in that achievement. Facing a roll down this weekend, Marge boldly tells Jerry to ignore the threats, emphasizing that as long as they're together, they should go all out. Her fearless stance is just the motivation Jerry needs. Steve is all for it and Bill thought they'd never come. At Harvard, Tyler is enraged that his bluff was called. However, he concocts a plan to trigger an unexpected roll down. A roll down occurs when the prize pool hits $2 million. Tyler's strategy is to wait until it reaches $1 million, then bet an additional $1 million of their group's money to force the roll down. He secures support from major investors, giving them 14 hours to execute the plan. The risk is high, if someone wins the jackpot during this time, they'll lose everything. Bill brings urgent news to Jerry and Marge, the windfall lottery had an unexpected rolldown, and they missed it. Jerry immediately suspects Tyler and his Harvard group are behind this and decides it's time to confront them in person. When Jerry finally confronts Tyler, he's not angry. He observes that while everyone in the room is making Tyler rich, he questions Tyler's contribution to them. Jerry leaves them with a wish for good luck, as some start putting their tickets down. Later, in Steve's office, Jerry ponders why the lottery authorities haven't intervened against either their group or Tyler's, suspecting they might not be concerned. At the lottery headquarters, Jerry points out that despite Windfall's significant loophole, the lottery is still profiting because only a few are exploiting it. He proposes making roll-down thresholds public and installing another ticket machine at Bill's station, so he and Marge can be together. The executive is receptive to the idea. As Tyler gathers more investors, Eric delivers troubling news. The lottery has publicized the jackpot threshold, preventing any further orchestrated rolldowns. Tyler sees this as a declaration of war. However, his group members don't want to do it anymore, leaving Tyler to do it alone. He sits quietly while his tickets are printed, while Jerry and Marge are happily printing their tickets together. Maya discovers that not only Jerry but also Tyler has unearthed secrets about the windfall lottery. She meets Jerry as he plays ball with his son and learns about the workings of the lottery, the effort involved in counting tickets, and Jerry's enjoyment of the process. Moved by Jerry and Marge's contributions to their town, Maya hesitates to publish her expose on the windfall lottery. On the verge of their final lottery attempt, Jerry and Marge find out the lottery has been suspended due to the looming article. Tyler faces reprimand from his father, while the windfall lottery, now dubbed Windflaw by the media, becomes a hot topic. Jerry finally got to use his gift for math to connect with people.
With the amphitheater restored, the town can enjoy their weekly jazz festivals, uniting the community in gratitude towards Jerry. Unbeknownst to the pair, the townsfolk independently participated in the last rolldown. As Jerry and Marge dance, he acknowledges the fulfillment and joy of his golden years. Jerry's lottery calculation won a total of $27 million. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.